Today we're going to learn how to PM a floor scrubber. The first area we're going to start with is the top section. We're going to flip the lid up and we're going to clean the vacuum shutoff float which is right here. This is the housing. The ball floats on the inside. We're going to clean the solution tank screen which is right here at the end. We're also going to clean the vacuum intake screen which is right here. First, I'm going to remove the three screws from the vacuum float housing. Best way to clean this is with water and simple green. Uh, just take a wet rag. Clean everything out. Reason we want this clean is because if the vacuum recovery tank is full and the float housing is dirty, it won't shut off properly and the recovery tank will overflow. Once you're done with that, place the ball back in and the float housing back onto the top. Next, we want to clean the solution tank screen. This can be replaced if the screen looks clogged beyond repair or cleaning. It unscrews right off the tip of the hose. You can put this in hot water, uh, use an air compressor to blow it out, however you feel is necessary. We're going to dip ours in water and simple green. By doing this, usually all the dirt comes out, so you shouldn't have to use air. Wire brush works well. Screw that back on there. Make sure your tip isn't clogged. Next, we want to clean the vacuum intake, intake screen which is right here. This is very important not to use water for this because right underneath mounted is the actual vacuum. So if we put water into the screen, we're going to ruin the vacuum. So we want to use a pick or a wired brush and just scrape away the dirt and debris that's been uh, sucked and hardened on top of that. It is metal, so you are going to have to use a lot of force to ruin it. Once you're done, wipe the dirt away. That's it for the top part. Next, we want to go ahead and put the lid back down. Turn the floor scrubber on its side. Now that we have the floor scrubber on the side, you want to make sure that this black knob is facing upward because that's how we remove the brush. All you do is simply twist it, loosen up the set screw. Once it's loose, pulls right out and the brush is free. Best way to do this is take it back to the mop sink, put some simple green water over it and try to get all the dirt and debris out of the brush. Next, we want to go ahead and remove our squeegees. There's a pull tab. You pull back, and the squeegees pull right out. One thing you want to make sure is there is a groove side and a flat side. The groove side faces outward from the tracks, and the black squeegees go on the outside. The gray squeegees go on the inside. You want to go ahead and remove each one of these and clean all the dirt and debris off of them. Once you've cleaned all four squeegees, you want to go ahead and put them back in. Remember the grooves facing outward. The outside uh, squeegees, the grooves are facing this way. The inside squeegees, the grooves are facing inside. So once they're back in, the clip's in place. Next, you want to go ahead and clean out the uh, brush housing, which is this area right here. 
You want to go ahead and remove any debris and dirt from the housing so that the brush can uh, maneuver as it should. Make sure to get everything out of there. Uh, the first time it is going to be dirty and there is going to be a lot of debris. The cleaner you get it the first time, the better it's going to work and the better it's going to run the long run. Now that all four squeegees are clean, our brush is clean and our housing is clean, next we want to go to our inlet openings. Your inlet openings, there's going to be two of them. There's going to be one in the front right here. There's going to be one in the back right here. Best way to clean them is just using a pick. You want to get in there and take any dirt, hair, or anything like that and pull it out. That way, the store is able to pick up water as it should. These do get clogged easily as if the store is not vacuuming beforehand. Now that both our inlet out openings, brush, brush housing, and all four squeegee squeegees are cleaned, next we want to put the brush back in. Note there's a grooved edge. To make sure the grooved edge goes down first. It'll fit in. And you want to take your outer plate, your housing plate, put it back on like so, and twist the knob until it's tight and secure. Now that we have the bottom housing clean and the top lid clean, next is the uh, internal tubing and the belt. All right, last. We want to clean the tubing in the uh, motor housing. Uh, you want to remove the two tanks in the back and the screw in the front. And the two screws in the back, right and left lower corner. Once you have those screws out, tilt the uh, housing back. Underneath you'll see your motor, uh, your solution tubing, then your two uh, vacuum hoses. There's also a power plug up underneath. Push the clip up and unplug it. And remove the two vacuum hoses from their ports. Be careful when removing the housing. The front hose does run underneath the motor. Once you have that out, take the housing back to the sink, the mop sink, and clean any type of de debris and dirt out of the hosing so that uh, the floor scrubber can suck up the uh, water as it should. Next, after cleaning the tubing, you want to go ahead and check your belt for any wear and tear. If there's cracks in it, go ahead and replace it. You also want to check the tension on it, make sure it's not too loose or too tight. Now that we've cleaned our tubing and our checked our belt, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the motor housing back on top. Once you have your tubing in, you want to go ahead and reconnect your power source. Lift the housing back on top. Put your screws in. That's how you do a floor scrubber PM.